Hello, my name is Kenneth Kramer, and this is my architectural critique of 432 Park Ave for ICR Spring 2022. So, for 432 Park Ave was developed by the CIM Group and Harry B. Macklow, and the designer was Raphael Vignoli. So, 432 Park Ave is located on 57th and Park Ave in New York City, otherwise known as Billionaire's Row. It costs $1.25 billion to build the entire building. It is 104 units across 85 floors, and it stands at about 1,397 feet tall. So, this building is obviously very tall. It's a super slender. It is one of like the first of its kind. It stands at a 1 to 15 ratio, which is practically unheard of and only really possible due thanks to like high strength concrete and massive engineering that went behind it. So as you can see with the design, it is, the, we'll start on the height. <laughs> so you can see standing at 1,397 feet tall it is actually taller than the World Trade Center by like legal height. So you can see in this graph here, it doesn't stand taller than the spire, but in New York, the spire is actually not counted because it works as a cell phone tower on the World Trade Center. So it is technically taller and when you look at the skyline, you actually can tell that because obviously the spire starts to disappear like the further you get away. So I feel like architecturally, that's one of my first critiques of it. It doesn't respect the skyline and it doesn't respect like the significance that the skyline has, which I sort of do have a problem with. And next, you can see also with the design, it is based off of the square as a pure geometric form. Everything is in this square gridded system that has been very fragmented and put to allow for a very thinness and easiness of floor plan, as you can see here, without showing like mass structure and like mass columns that follow all the way through except for that outer edge. And actually, it is also with like going on the square. It is 93 and a half feet by 93 and a half feet around the tower is. And these each of these windows are 10 feet by 10 feet, which is massive glazing, just an amazing from a material standpoint. And then also upon engineering, you see here the amount of rebar that it took because this building, if it were to be made out of regular concrete or steel, would simply topple over it has to have psychotic amounts of tensile strength that you can see here with like the rebar and then also more concrete the entire building doesn't it's all like concrete slab concrete column concrete core concrete everything because that was the only material that could properly be developed to with with hand withhold it and also like site wise, it is very smart. It follows all of the New York rules with step back, but it keeps its square form all the way up as you can see here on the site and sort of like these dash lines that go up, those show like where it needs to step back per like the street. And it created a nice little park at the bottom, retail space, and you see here actually like one or two more buildings around it that they used as almost like an avenue into the building. Okay. Engineering wise though, this building is sort of, <laughs> sort of odd because the tune mass damp dampers that it uses all the way at the top are obviously meant to reduce the sway of the building but it sort of has failed miserably. And I think from an architectural standpoint, that's really sad because you weren't like, Raphael Vignoli wasn't made to design for this building to be swaying so heavily. Neither were interior designers or anyone else in this building. And the sways alone caused from the wind 
things that aren't like aren't properly tuned even with these pass-through floors as you can see and how they're like trying to reduce the wind as the building goes up because it has just like such an immense push from like all the wind going above the building that that are near it and then it is sort of like the sore thumb that sticks out and now has to take all of that load it sways so heavily that within the past couple of years it actually has an 125 million dollar lawsuit against the developers due to multiple water breaks that lead led to like massive flooding within the building ruining a lot of these like very very expensive apartments and I know a lot of structural repairs have also had to be, be like happening because it is such ex so experimental and just yeah it was a good try <laughs> and then lastly another critique of this building is that the apartments while they are beautiful and as you can see here it towers above the clouds and everything so pretty to see these apartments are around like 150 to i believe 250 million dollars and within new york that's that's nice like there are people that can afford it but the affordable housing market in new york is vastly dwindling it's a lot of the affordable housing has gone into disrepair and then you pop this up and sort of market it towards the rich and it's even in a worse state because people use it as investments. They buy these apartments, then you keep them completely empty because real estate matures faster. And overall, I just don't like 432 Park Ave. <laughs>